Did you get it wet or did you buy it? I got it wet. Soaked. It was, yeah. <laughs> so it looks about 100 years old. I was going to get it out from the library, but I did not want a three week limit to read this. Oh, yeah. Hi, everyone. It's Maddie. And V, and today we're going to be doing a book haul from things that we got from way back last year all the way up till now. First, we're adding a physical book to our collection that we'd only read an e-copy of, and that's Loveless by Alice Oseman. I did a whole review of this one, so I'll leave that linked in the cards, but we loved it and it recently won the YA Book Prize for this year. So super excited to see it getting that recognition and we're both excited to see Heartstopper come to screens. I still haven't finished it yet because it... It's too close, wasn't it? it? Too close. It like triggered me into a dark spiral. Um, So I would really like to because I think it's going to be rewarding to get to the end, so... When I get over that internalised phobia bit, I think I'll be living. Next we have some random books that we picked up from TK Maxx for like three or four pounds and they're like American edition. No idea why they're there. No, TK Maxx has always got some weird stuff in there and we, they're always in the children's book section, yeah, yeah, yeah. like with you the picture dig. books. So we found Final Draft by Riley Redgate, who is the author of Seven Ways We Lie and what was that other one that we actually... Uh, Noteworthy is the one Noteworthy. that really like Noteworthy. It's well. about a girl who's written a manuscript and then yes. she's trying to get it read by one of her teachers and she's just trying to finish a book. We are currently in the process of trying also to trying finish our own book. <laughs> so Maybe this is too triggering for us also. Then we have Done Dirt Cheap by Sarah and Nicole Lemon cutest name ever possibly um I picked this one up mostly for the illustration on the front Tourmaline and Virginia don't know who's who and there's this nice motorbike on the front and I love the color story of the blue and the yellow next we have a little selection of books we got for Christmas first we have Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor and this is the second and final in the Strange the Dreamer duology which I am currently trying to reread um but I've been doing it for months and haven't got further than like 60 pages um and I really need to read that so that I can finally read this because Strange the Dreamer really had me in a chokehold when I read it. It was just so beautiful um, and I want to know what happens next. So this is a top priority, but I probably won't finish it until the end of the year. I picked Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Bayron. This was like one of the big new fantasies in booktube when I first came back to it. And I love Cinderella. She's my favourite fairy tale. So any chance to see it retold in a different way, I'm all on board. I think it kind of works like the selection where girls oh. are chosen to be the prince's, you know, one true love, but she's actually in love with her female best friend so it's a sapphic love story too and I remember reading the first chapter in the bookstore before I like figured out that I wanted to buy this and it was really compelling like they were already running away from the situation so it's high drama high stakes immediately and um, even though I haven't really read like something of this genre in a really long time I'm excited for the nostalgia I'll feel when I finally get around to it and the font's nice I like the font in here that's very important it is. And our joint pick was Shine by Jessica Jung, who is a previous member of Girls' Generation. If this room isn't anything to go by, K-pop has become one of our huge passions in the time that we've been away from booktube, so what better way than to experience it in a book by an actual K-pop idol herself? It may have been slightly ghostwritten, mm. but we'll see. We'll read about it. I'm excited for that one. Then we have a lovely little collection of books, which was from our very first trip to Waterstones once lockdown ended. We'd missed them, they'd missed us. <laughs> it, was a, it was a lovely experience and we spent so long there uh, that when we got to the till, the shop assistant was like, you've been here a long time, haven't you? And we were like, don't make a point of it. So we picked this lovely like complimentary colour palette of books that was yeah. unintentional, but... I really hate that all adult books seem to be red, orange or yellow though. Give me some purple! Where are the purple adult books? I have read these two and you can hear my thoughts on the truants in my reading every day for 30 minutes video that I'll put in the cards. And then I'm gonna talk about Exciting Times by Nisha Dolan later, probably when I read some other books from the Women's Prize for Fiction 2021. Because ah, nice. this was in the long list Sorry, but it didn't make the short list. Oh, ah, okay. We saw this um, ages and ages ago, like before the previous lockdown in Waterstones when it was in hardback, and we were like, oh, we don't buy hardbacks. So we waited a long time to have <laughs> this one. And then the other two books we have, Adults by Emma Jane Unsworth, and we picked this one because we needed another book on the buy one, get one half price for the deal. This is about a young woman in her, I imagine, mid to late 20s, mm -hmm. uh, which is an age that I would really like to read more from. Um, and I read the first like chapter or so, and it's quite humorous so I think it's going to be fun even though it's quite largely intimidating. I'm hoping for some like flea bag energy from it. Oh yes absolutely. And I picked You Have to Make Your Own Fun Around Here by Frances Macken. This is a story about three teens or like early 20s girls living in Ireland and they've been a close-knit 
trio of friends for a really long time but the main character wants to move away from the town to start her life i assume to go to university or a job destroys their friendship no I, i'm not sure it destroys their friendship but it definitely impacts it because she's not like the most popular member of the trio oh, okay. um and i think it's like the influence of that popular girl that's made her feel like she can't move on so Ooh. i'm i'm really interested in this friendship dynamic so it's got some like toxic elements to it then yes literally intoxicating okay. is like one of the words so yeah i just like friendship stories and it's another like buzzy like this age group kind of book that i'm super interested in the next category is battered charity shop books this is into the water by paula hawkins have you heard that this one already? Is, no i haven't okay. this is a thriller I don't know anything about it besides the genre and I think you can pretty much guess that from the cover. I'm really not a fan of spending £9 on a thriller when they yeah. don't have much rereadable qualities about them, yeah, so fair. picking them up from a charity shop seems like the best way forward. I think she was the author of another really massive one that I might have actually recognised. Oh, okay. no, oh, The Girl on the Train. She's oh. The Girl on the Train author. Oh, just days before her sister plunged to her death, Jill ignores her call. Now Mel is dead, they say she jumped. Must return to her sister's house to care for her daughter. Ooh. That sounds really good. <laughs> that's been on the shelf for months so we didn't even know what that, it was about that sounds really interesting okay then these were kind of all maddie's picks so Some i'll go picks. with explaining the bell jar by sylvia platt we had a copy of this cover disgusting <laughs> this is actually like quite cute so yeah, it's lovely. and it's in really good condition like no cracks in the spine or anything so have you read this one already i have read the first like 60 pages of it and i was like Ooh, the xenophobia leaped out so Oof. i'll have to like try and read it with that in mind but yeah. it's all about a young girl's like spiral into a mental health crisis so I think people still find it quite relatable on those grounds. Summer of 1953. But I've been reading a lot more like historical or like you know mm. mid 20th century kind of books so I'm hoping that the landscape of the book um, and the history behind it will feel familiar yeah, to me. Yeah recognisable. Nice. So this one's nice and short too which is makes it to be your mighty TBR. <laughs> what are these? Um, this is one that we saw in Waterstones when we did our book browse and then I fortunately found it in a charity shop the next day so <laughs> that was just lucky. Um, this one a Man Booker Prize I think in the year yeah. that it came out um, and it's all about twins and one of the twins has died. Oh. So, eek. Uh, it's like a brother-sister twin set oh, okay. but I read the first chapter and they like explained the bond between them and how they always use the plural we even when they're separate and I was like doing that <laughs> so i knew that I was gonna, i've been like, seen <laughs> i think this is like slightly out of my comfort zone for the kind of books i usually read mm. but just because the writing was so compelling i think i'll get on really well with it that's a nice thing to say <laughs> <laughs> thank you then we have everything i know about love by dolly alderton this did alderton no this did not survive did you get it wet or did you buy it <laughs> i got it when soaked it was, yeah someone had obviously read it in the bath or something yeah this is this is a damaged copy so it looks about 100 years old even though it only came out like two years ago or something i see dolly alderton's name on basically any women's fiction published within the last two years yeah. as like someone that they give the books to review to oh, um, okay. so i thought oh, she's a blurber yeah uh... a, a, a frequent blurber um so i thought i would you know pick out one of her things it's like autobiographical slash memoir and just a bunch of essays i read the first one and it's all about um msn relationships that you had in secondary school and i found <laughs> it hilarious and like so on the nose for that kind of experience so i think even though she is like a millennial and we're kind of in that weird like millennial gen black z hole between we, the yeah, two yeah, yeah. um i think i'm still gonna find this like super relatable and we're both trying to get Von more big to yay nice. <laughs> we're both trying to get more into non-fiction and uh, i think as i said in our like end of year tbr video or whatever like memoirs was the way i was well, yes go. that's true so, that's true following through <laughs> yeah, woo. then we have moranifesto by Catelyn moran and we both read how to build a girl and enjoyed it this is like a collection of essays in yeah. tiny chunks like the contents page huge look oh, at all of those in there. um i've dipped in and out of a few of them um and whilst i don't agree with her 100 percent anything to do with class i think she's a good voice to listen to but she's sort of lacking some intersectionality when it comes to gender and sexuality and we also have the sequel to how to build a girl how to be famous because as we said we liked that book so much there's a sequel that existed and we got it for a charity shop for like a pound fifty and then we have books that we got for our birthday so the first one this was my pick yes. is if i had your face by francis cha this is quite buzzy um i feel like i've had a lot of people talking about it and it's set in south korea and it's about the abundance plas of plastic surgery isn't it cosmetic surgery that's oh. what it is i've read quite a few things set in south korea now so this is just adding 
to that list. I bought the first book in the Seven Sisters series by Lucinda Riley. I was actually gifted the Sun Sister, which is like maybe the sixth or seventh book in the series at Secret Santa at work. Um, and then I was like, wow, there are more books to this. And they can be read as standalone stories. Like they mm. all have the same kind of first chapter vibe where all of the sisters go back to their dad and he's like, there are all these stories about your heritage and where you came from because they're all adopted. And each book uh, goes into okay. talking about the sisters. I was going to get it out from a library, but I did not want a three week limit to read this. Oh yeah. This is 620 pages and all of the books in the series are like that. So this is like Game of Thrones, but the contemporary <laughs> version. Statistics wise, one of them has to be a lesbian. And I yes. think that's the fourth book, so I'm okay. just reading up until that point. <laughs> then we have maybe the buzziest book of this year, um, and that's The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. As you can see, we're trying to fill in a few more of those women's prize books. And this definitely made the shortlist, I assume. Yeah, this, this will probably win it, I imagine. This is again about sisters. I think they're even twins. Yeah, yeah identical twins. twins. They're really close when they're younger and then they try and flee from their home community. One of them finds themselves back there and the other manages to pass as white in a new community. So it's kind of about the disparity between the two and how they relate to each other now. And anything to do with twins is gonna probably be good yeah, for us yeah, so yeah. yeah and luckily because this is so popular it went to paperback very quickly yes. from hardback so we could actually read this one this is the biggest haul we've had in a very long time but it is about six months in the making yes. so i forgot that we even had some of these books so this has definitely re-energized my excitement for them you're looking at my tbr right now yeah this is nice. Since buying these books, though, we have kind of decided to change how we buy books in the future mm -hmm. because we want to start using our local library a lot more. Um, and so the books we buy now will probably be books we've already read and yes. just want to add to our collection. But we can't resist some of these, yeah. especially if we are predicting them to be highly rated. Thank you everyone so much for watching this video. Let us know if any of these books are your favourite, if you think that we should bump them up on our TBR piles. We'll see you next time. <laughs>